Five Nights at Freddy's is the greatest thing since unsliced bread. Or at least that's what we thought as kids when it came out. It went from a silly horror game to one of the biggest properties of the 21st century. It even has a movie coming out that I pray the Lord helps push this video. The franchise doesn't really need any introduction at all. You all know what Five Nights at Freddy's is, but this empire all started from a single game. The original Five Nights at Freddy's game is iconic and fondly remembered today. It's a mix of dark atmosphere, simple gameplay, lore, and iconic jump scares which was completely fresh at the time. It started a completely new set of indie horror and horror in general with mascot horror and a reliance on jump scares, for better or worse. However, FNAF 1 isn't really played today by longtime fans, even though it has a great reputation to it. I can't give my opinion on it because I've actually never played it. My FNAF experience is really small. I think I played one night of FNAF 1 on an iPod when it came out, and like two nights of FNAF 3. The only other info I know comes from friends and YouTubers. So I took it upon myself to find out, is this game still fun, or is it a product of its time? Before we start, I would appreciate it if you gave a like and subbed or else Freddy will come and get you. Let's get into it. Before I got into the actual game, there were some issues to say the least. This game was made by one person and probably wasn't expected to blow up, so there's some issues with display settings, resolution, and all that stuff. It'll only really be an issue if you want to stream yourself playing it to a friend or something, so I won't really knock the game too much for it. You can really tell the simplicity of this game even from the first menu. A render of Freddy, some creepy ambience, and just new game, and continue. I just loaded in and started my first night. The first thing you'll notice is what I mentioned earlier. There is some weird screen tearing in the middle of the screen. It was odd, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Since it was my first time playing, I tried to keep this playthrough as blind as possible unless I got really stuck. The call man starts to talk to you on the first night with this iconic speech and then we're off to go. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but then there was the bite of 87. Yeah, I didn't realize he went on for that long. The controls are a bit odd. There isn't any keybind, so everything is done with your mouse. It was a bit odd at first, but I got used to it. The first night tends to be pretty easy with the animatronics not being too aggressive. However, FNAF 1 still makes it tense because the nights are by far the longest in the series, at almost 9 minutes. It really does make you feel tense about your power. Still though, it was the first night, so I was mostly chilling. I did know that you only had to worry about Bonnie and Chica your first night, so I didn't bother checking any of the other two. Despite that though, I was pretty slow using the cameras. Surely this will not come back to bite me later. I got one or two door scares, but not much else happened on night one. I did get locked in by both Bonnie and Chica though. As I continued the night two, there was much of the same. The prior two were more aggressive though so I had a bit more trouble with power management. Honestly, I wish I had more to show as far as gameplay is concerned, but from a viewer's perspective, there isn't much to it. You kinda just check cameras and the door is on a cycle. Not too interesting to watch. Foxy started to get more active, but still, I just kept the left door shut at the end of the night and I was a-okay. Night 3 was the night things really got interesting. Foxy was a lot more active, as well as the other animatronics, so I played this night very frantically. I felt like I was being decently challenged for the first time. Then, this happened. You're a little tight on power, but I think you should- Oh, be... Jesus! Whoa. <laughs> that actually got me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got jump scared. It happens to the best of us. But it was time to try again. Alright, I got a good start going to this night. I think I'll do it this time. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Again? I didn't even see her on the camera! Okay then. Thanks, Chica. I actually started to notice the hallucinations on my third try on this night, which I didn't even know were hallucinations, so they freaked me out. I was doing pretty well on this attempt, and I even made it to 4am. Unfortunately, Foxy didn't want to see me winning. I started to develop a bit of a strategy now, though. I would check Foxy's cam and then check the lights of each door. This actually worked for night 3. I had a few door scares here and there, but otherwise, an easy night. Night 4 is much of the same, except Call Man gets murdered this time. I continued with my strategy and it worked for a while. However, I forgot about what happened on night 4. The main character comes out to play. Well now I don't even need to check off on it. Uh, I probably should check. Oh. Oh. I wasn't in the camera! Surely this was a one time thing. I'll do it next time. I might be dead. You can do it. Nope. I was ready to give up at this point. Had I been bested? 
Was I too weak to beat the Freddy Fazbear? Of course not. I have a video to make. So I looked far and wide and did a rigorous amount of research, such as searching up how to beat FNAF 1, Night 4, on YouTube. But I found something that broke my mind. This entire game is broken. I was easily able to beat Night 4. How? I'm not going to go over the entire method, but here's the gist. If you have a routine of checking the cameras for a split second, then checking each door, it's almost impossible to die. This is because by checking your cameras for a split second rapidly, you lock two animatronics in place, Freddy and Foxy. Freddy can't leave the stage, and Foxy can't leave his cove. That surprised me, since I thought you had to check his cam specifically. The only real issues can be Bonnie and Chico, but if you regularly check the doors and lights, you'll be fine. I actually almost got this method on my own, but now I know what cam to watch and how fast to do it. But now I was able to beat Night 4 with almost zero problems. Now it was time for the climax, the fifth night at Freddy's. I was ready with my strategy and I was going to win, but one person didn't want that to happen, Chica. I hate her. She has been the bane of my existence this entire playthrough. She will sit her fat, not nice word, down, and not move from my not nice word, door. She drained so much of my power. It was 3 a.m. and I was already down to 40%. I had the perfect strategy, but the AI was in hater mode. It turned to 5 a.m. and my power was almost out. It was time for my moment of truth. Did I do enough? I trust the process. Come on, oh. fingers crossed. I'm trying. Me too. Come on. Nice. Yeah. I knew it. Damn. I won and got my $120. Life is good. I am the fifth knight of Fazbear Kingdom. Wait, there's an extra knight? Yeah, I don't have much to say about Night 6. It was honestly easier than Night 5. I didn't even run out of power. The only really scare was that I accidentally tabbed out of the game at 5am, but that was it. I survived Five Nights at Freddy's. Or I guess six, technically. Now, as someone who has played this for the first time, what did I think of it? To start, there's a lot of good here. The atmosphere, iconography, and personality of this game could honestly be argued as the peak of the series. This feels like a horror game even if the franchise isn't really viewed as that anymore. I do also appreciate the formula this game set up. It's simple yet very memorable. You sit in your room, watch cameras, and don't use too much power. It doesn't need too much to give you a scare. The main thing I'm mixed on is the gameplay. I do think the simplicity is nice, but it has its flaws. If you're going in blind, you're not really going to understand how things work and also have to deal with the long nights. However, once you find out anything about the inner workings of the game, it falls apart and is super easy to cheese. I feel like this is the part that has aged the worst other than the jump scares. I know they are iconic, but man, they have aged. Unless you're a YouTuber playing it up for a video, the jump scares get you once or twice and then they're just kind of annoying. The hallucinations and ambient noise is what I found a lot creepier most of the time. My only real negative is on the technical side that I mentioned. I get it's old and early in the franchise, but it is annoying when you're playing now. Also, I'm not mentioning the story. It's barely in this game, and that's a whole other can of worms I don't want to open. So, would I recommend playing FNAF 1 right now? I would say a big maybe. If you want a short game to stream and call with friends and laugh at, want to tap into a bit of nostalgia, or want to just get into the franchise start to finish, of course play this game. But if you're looking for a great horror game to play right now, I would look somewhere else first. FNAF 1 is not a bad game, but it's not going to blow your socks off. It's a product of its time. Hope you all enjoyed the spooky video, and hopefully I got this out before Halloween or on the day. I've wanted to make this FNAF video for a while, so if you want to see me do more of them, then just let me know in the comments. Also, leave a like and a sub if you want more like this as well. If you want to support me even more than that, you can throw in a dollar to my Patreon link below or hit the join button on my channel. A special thank you to Bungus, Slack, and Master Necro for supporting me in making these videos. You can also join my Discord if you want more Chaos for Real content and want to come say hi. Thanks for watching. I'm Chaos for Real, and...